också till Norge. So uh, before we will uh, we will go and speak about uh, our our subject today. Uh, för vi ska snacka om tema idag. I'll just share my my testimony a little bit with you. Så ska jag dela lite av vittnesbördet med. I was born in uh, Ukraine at that time it was Soviet Union. Jag var född i Ukraina den gång Sovjet. And uh, we were living with our family. Our family is the half Jewish, half Russian. Och vi bodde med familjen då, halvt judisk, halvt russisk. We were we well, as a secular agnostic I would say and uh, actually before we got saved we were we were dealing with lots of uh, different mysticism and energy and all this stuff. Mm. Uh, jag var sekulär och agnostiker och för att bli frälst så höll jag på med mysticism och sådana energier och sånt. And uh, my mom she got saved in uh, 1996. Uh, Mor med blev frälst i 1996. And uh, actually our relative uh, she brought my mom to faith in, in Yeshua and Jesus. Och det var min släkting som vakte mor med uh, tro på Jesus. And uh, three months later uh, my mom she invited me to come uh, to the church. Och tre månader senare så inviterade mor med mig till kyrka. Now in my imagination church was like an orthodox. You, have you seen the Orthodox churches, Russian Orthodox church? Ja, i fantasien min så var jag i kyrka och en sån ortodox, så har du sett sån där russisk ortodox? So in my, imagine, in my imagination was a very dark place with the icons around, with the big cross and the very sad people. Och jag tänkte mig att det här var en mörk plats med ikoner och ett stort kors och sådana här triste folk. But when I came out it was a red and hall of one full gospel Uh, Christian congregation. Men där jag kom så var det en sån uh, sal som var leid med en full kristen uh, forsamling. Very similar to this hall. Ganske lik denne salen. And there was a worship. Og det var tilbedelse. I, re I even remember the first song uh, that God is a king and we are victorious in him. Og jeg husker den første sangen. Gud er konge og vi er seire med ham. And I don't remember the message. Och hur ska jag ge utskottet? But I remember when was the altar call. Men jag huskar att uh, inbjudelsen till att komma fram för fransen. At that moment I was 12 years old. Och jag var 12 år. And uh, the preacher was speaking about our sinful nature as humankind. Och förkynnaren talade om vår syndiga natur som människa. That we, every man, have to repent and come before God. Att uh, ett hvert menneske må omvende seg og komme til Gud. That God is calling us to repentance, we have to believe in the, in the in God's Son, Jesus Christ. At Gud kaller oss til omvendelse, og at vi må tro på hans sønn, Jesus Kristus. Så so, jeg kom til the front, så jeg kom fram, and uh, I repeated prayer, og jeg gjentok bønna. And I, the moment that I was uh, repeating this prayer, I felt that something unusual happening at that moment. I closed my eyes and felt something really unique happening now, at that moment. Og i det øyeblikk jeg gjentok bønna, så kjente jeg at noe uvanlig skjedde. Jeg lukket øynene, og så kjente jeg noe skjedde som er helt uvanlig. You know, I was really bad, I would say bad kid, bad teenager. Ja, jeg var en dårlig unge, dårlig tenåring. Jeg hadde så mye, you know, jeg var egentlig en kid i familien. Jeg var en sånn enebarn. And uh, it was uh, lots of, you know, ego, uh, very, you know, self-centered. Uh, and I understand that if, if that moment I would come to the Lord, uh, if I wouldn't come to yeah, the Lord, no, uh, probably I would end up in prison. So one day. Yeah, I'm totally I was doing lots of bad stuff. But praise God, he saved my life. Yeah. So in one year, in 1996, my mom got saved and myself and my, then my father. So Everyone in one year. So for that in 1996, so they moved first, Now you know that in the 90s, when there was a fall of Soviet Union, the great revival came to Ukraine and Russia. Du kan veta att i riktiga år när Sovjet fall så kom det en stor väckelse till Ukraina och Ryssland. Så vi var en del av det här revival, vi blev säkert och senare kom vi till Israel. Så vi var en del av den väckelsen, vi blev då frälst och så drog vi senare till Israel. Så när jag var 12 var jag säkert, när jag var 13 var jag baptist i vatten och den Holy Spirit. Så när jag var 12 så blev jag frälst och när jag var 13 så blev jag dött i vann och i den här livet. Jag var slägen i bädd, innan jag gick till sleep. Jeg lå i sengen før jeg skulle sove. And suddenly I started to pray in tongues and singing in tongues. 
was really unusual. It was really like a, a foreign language. I remember the first words I was speaking, you know. <laughs> For about two, two hours I couldn't stop actually. I was singing and praying in tongues. Yeah. Yeah. So we were uh, part of the, uh, the full gospel church in, in uh, central Ukraine for two years. So we were there of the full gospel church and then we had a special guest from Ebenezer organization coming to our church and they said our goal is to bring Jews back to the land of Israel so uh, we were praying for that we were, thought, we were just thinking about moving to Israel we, read, we started reading the books about the Jews who come to know the Lord in the recent years and, uh, my, and suddenly my father say, just told us we are going to Israel. Now we have no friends, no friends, relatives, no one in Israel at the moment. So we moved in the beginning of 99. So we flipped in At that moment I was almost 15 years old. And when we came, as I said, we had no relatives, we had no friends in the land of Israel. So six months we were without any fellowship with the believers. Six months. And my father, uh, suddenly my father bought a newspaper. So I the phone in my and in this newspaper was an article about the love of God. And in this, in the bottom of this article was the phone number of the one messianic congregations in the center of Israel. So we uh, called and we uh, we just you know uh, called this number and we we could join the local fellowship. So I finished, uh, we joined the congregation, it was a great time of starting to learn Hebrew, it was a, because it was a Hebrew speaking congregation. But I was very for that the boys, it's not my boys. And uh, I could uh, actually, I had, when I was a kid, I had a dream to become a translator. When I was young, I had a dream to become a translator. And when I came to Israel, I could, this, uh, I could learn Hebrew, so that I made a voice. And uh, two years later, I, I became a translator in this congregation. Also, play to So my, my, my dream from my childhood actually fulfilled in Israel. You know, we have Jews coming from many nations, and uh, in, when you go in and visit in the local congregations, you will see like. 10, 15 languages sometimes in one place. So we have believing Jews speaking Russian, English, Romanian, Polish, English, and other languages. So we have Jews in two languages, like Russian, Polish, English, and so on. And Norwegian. Especially when Daniel comes. Especially when Daniel comes. So it's a great fellowship together when people from many countries they come, Jewish people coming from many countries and they join the local body of Christ. So that fantastic fellowship when many Jews come and so they are near and local men. So I I finished my high school and I went to be as uh, as a soldier, went to the army. I started to go to the army and so for the army. Was it just a little bit testimony about that and. Uh, I, I got I got a paper from uh, from the, my military forces that I'm going to serve at the military radio. I think that the paper for how am I going to serve at the military military radio? And uh, I was so happy because I knew if I'm going to serve there, I'm going to be at home every day. I was very glad for this too. It's going to be about ten hours. Come here to the home. But finally, what happened? When I came to take my this paper to go uh, to this military base in the central Israel, I've been told that the commander changed their mind and I'm going to serve in the desert. And it means that I'm not going to be at home every day. So I understood that 
them going to be in the desert, in the desert, the negative desert. So the obvious that Urkan, the negative Urkan. And uh, you know, when I came there, I had actually it was a very difficult time for me there. Or at the beginning. A tough day for my life, you know. Because I never, I never seen desert in my life before. I had all the sad Urkan for. You know, because I'm coming from Ukraine, and Ukraine is very green, there's lots of forests, you know. I come here for a coin hard, I want to do it for your school. And I sudden, you know, I see all this, uh, every, there is no trees and there is like, it was really difficult for the first time. Also, come and I eat and that was very difficult. And I tried to run from this place. I tried to run from this place. But finally, praise God, after two months, I understood that God wants me to be there. And uh, thank you that the two months was to a good bit on my time. And to be alive to the fellow soldiers and serving together. So at that moment when I was in the army, it was a very difficult time in Israel. You, I think you remember what happened in the beginning of uh, uh, the millennium. That time was a very difficult time for Israel. I remember what happened in the beginning of 2000. There were lots of uh, terror attacks happening in uh, Jerusalem and other places. There were many terror attacks in Jerusalem and other places. And uh, there were lots of uh, lots of su suicide bomber. Uh, should, uh, they were just exploding in the buses and the, on the streets. There were many salmons on the bus and on the road. So there was a really, you know, was a really tough time in Israel. So there were many hard times in Israel. And before we build the wall, actually, protecting from the terror attacks. But that was a fairly big down move. So, so we had this. We had the lots of terror attacks going on around our, around in different cities. So I was uh, serving as a, at the beginning as a, just as a driver in the military. So to be a chauffeur in military. And year later, I became an ambulance driver. Also, I was signed up by ambulance chauffeur. So I had a very active service in the, in the in the in the army. So I was very active in the military. Same time sharing the gospel with my fellow soldiers. Oh, something is a deal they are getting. I'm not sure. And I just, you know, we were we were being worshiping the Lord together, and all of us feel this this presence of the Holy Spirit today. Oh, we till now all the we chant the Holy Gospel. And I just give give you a small testimony what happened to me when I was in the military and the army at that time. En liten, liten stund det som skedde i Haran den gången. Ah, the rabbi of the base actually was coming to me and just, just tell him about his problem. Suddenly, he started to speak. Plötsligt så kom han, var binanda på basen och fortalade mig om hans problem. And he didn't know that I'm a believer. Han visste ju att det var en tvåna. But probably he felt something, you know. Men han tog ju inte fullt av nätterna. So finally, I said, or just about a month, I think something like that. I said, I told him that I can pray for you. Oh, the slut so sorry, you ain't the problem. I don't have, you know, I can't resolve, I can't solve your problems, but I can pray for you in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. I can't even lose the problem, but I can't even pray in Jesus' name, Yeshua. I thought he is going to run away when he will hear this name. I thought that I'm coming to spring on. But it hasn't happened. So praise God, we we keep talking, and I was sharing the gospel with him also. Amen. Talk to you the shalitches we full set to snap to a deal the evangelium. Yeah. So a few more things before we just go and read from the from the word of God. A few things till for we listen from him. Yeah, I I got married seven seven and a half years ago. I believe it's true that I'm doing well. Yeah, I found my wife in a Christian dating website. I knew that she's not going to reply me from the, on the website. Thank you. Come here to saw me. So uh, I found her on Russian. <coughs> so I found, found from her, Russia. I found her on uh, Facebook in Russia. Three months uh, after we had the, our conversation, Skype conversation, three months later, I came to Russia with a ring <laughs> to propose for wow. the So we've been engaged like uh, the first day we met, physically met, we met. So we played a for love on the first day we physically met. I came in the morning and in the evening we were both engaged. We were engaged already. <laughs> Crazy, you know, it's a crazy like uh, step to do in one day. You just yeah, and being engaged. 
Så det att Carnival har sprutit liksom för att bli lov och vinna. We both had peace in, in our hearts. Men vi hade fred i vår hjärta bägge. And uh, later on, three months later, uh, I, I, I actually brought her to Israel. Och tre månader senare så tog jag upp henne till Israel. And we were married. Och vi gifte oss. It was a really difficult process because, you know, I don't know if you've heard, but uh, for us, it's a difficult issue to, uh, to get married in Israel. Okej, okay, så so det var en vanskelig process, kanske du har hört om det, men det är vanskelig för oss att faktiskt bli gift i Israel. Så so vi måste fly till Cyprus. Så so vi måste fly till Kypros. To sign all the documents. Och signera alla dokument. And later on we just had a special wedding ceremony with the chupa in Israel. Och lite senare så hade vi då en uh, bryllupsamling i Israel. Yeah, but you know, finally, you know, we, uh, as I said, we, we got married. Och vi blev då gift. For a couple of years we've been praying to have a child because we couldn't have a child. And praise God we have a daughter today. She is with us today. Her name is Liel. We have two names actually. Liel Shil. Liel Shil. We have two names that are Liel Shil. And the meaning is God is my song. Or meaning is God is my song. You know, because when we, we received it by revelation from God, this name, we fix the open boring for you. Because God is re is in reality He is our song. For and He answered our prayer. And He answered our prayer. Yes. 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 Praise God. So we live in Israel and we love our country. Yes. And I'm going to share a, about a very important subject today. I'm going to speak about the restoration of the Jewish nation. I know that Sasson already spoke about our nation and about what God is doing in the land and also about the persecutions. And I'm going to just see that we will, uh, we will look on the history. And what happened with our nation uh, starting uh, from the end of 19th century. Och det som eh, har skett med nationen vår och vi startade på slutet av 1800-talet. You know what happened is the regathering of the Jewish people of the Jewish people to their homeland. Det som skedde var en sån gensamling av eh, alltså samling på nytt av judiska folk i det här hemlandet. We can open our Bibles and uh, see the, what what prophet Ezekiel saying to us in Ezekiel 37 from verses 1 to 14. Vi kan läsa vad profeten Ezekiel säger till oss i kapitel 37, 1-14. Ezekiel 37, 1-14. Alltså, norsk bibel. Det var nytt testament där. Du har det i Norwegian? Ja, jag har det i Norwegian. Så Ezekiel 37. 1-14 Herrens ånd kom over meg, og den førte meg ut ved Herrens ånd, og satte meg ned midt i dalen. Den var full av bein. Så lot han meg gå rundt hele veien forbi den, og se, det var svært mange som lå der i den åpne dalen, og se, de var helt tørre. Han sa til meg, Menneskesønn skal disse beina få liv igjen. Du, da sa jeg, Herre, du vet det. Igjen talte han til meg, profeter til disse beina og si til dem, Dere tørre bein, hør Herrens ord. Så sier Herren Gud til disse beina, Sannelig, jeg skal la dere komme ånd inn i dere, og dere skal leve. Jeg skal feste senere på dere, og la dere komme kjøtt på dere. Dekke dere med hud, og la dere komme ånd inn i dere. Og dere skal leve, da skal dere kjenne at jeg er herre. Så profeterte jeg slik jeg var blitt befalt. Mens jeg profeterte, kom det et brak, og se, det ble en klapring. Beina takk nær hverandre, hver av dem til det beinet det hørte til. Jeg så, og se, det kom senere og kjøtt på dem. Og det var, for det kom hud som dekket dem, men det var ikke ånd i dem. Da sa han til meg, profeter til ånden, profeter menneskesønn og si til ånden, så sier Herren Gud, kom fra de fire vindretningene, 
du ånd og pust på disse drakter så de kan leve. Så profeterte jeg slik han befolkte meg. Da kom ånden inn i dem, og de ble levende, og de sto på føttene. En her som var meget, meget stor. Da sa han til meg, menneskesønn, disse beina er her i Israels hus. Se, de sier, våre beina er tørre, vårt håp er ute, og selv har vi revet bort. Profeter derfor og si til dem, så sier Herren Gud, se, dere mitt folk, jeg skal åpne deres graver. La dere komme opp fra gravene og føre dere inn i Israels land. Da skal dere kjenne at jeg er Herren. Når jeg åpner deres graver, mitt folk, og fører dere opp fra gravene, jeg skal gi dere min ånd i dere, og dere skal leve. Jeg skal la dere hvile i deres eget land. Da skal dere kjenne at jeg, Herren, har talt det, og at det er jeg som gjør det, sier Herren. Praise the Lord. Takk Gud. Friends, you know, when we read this passage, it's a very known passage in the Bible. Venner, dette er jo et veldig kjent avsnitt fra Bibelen. And what happened in the, well, while you're speaking about the history in the end of 19th century. Det som skjedde på slutten av 1800-tallet. You know that there were pogroms in Russia, the Russian Empire. Så var det sånn her pogromer i Russland, altså drap og sånn, det russiske imperiet. And the Jewish people from Russia, not only from Russia, but from other countries like Austria, Hungary and other places, they were starting to flat, to flee from there. And some of the people, some of the Jewish people, they came to the Palestine. And we see what when we we just you know we see the history, the modern history, and the ancient history. We see all the old history and all the new history. You think what's I mean what's what what was happening actually? Because the, you know that moment in uh, in our our land it, it was just empty, it was just rocks, and uh, there were nothing good there. Actually, it was not fruitful land. For på den tiden så var det steiner, det var tomt, det var ikke noe bra, det var ikke fruktbar. And suddenly you see this crazy, I would say crazy Jews coming from the Russian Empire and other places to settle. Og så ser du plutselig at disse sprøde jødene da kommer fra det russiske imperiet og så slår seg ned. In the place which is like not from there. På et sted som det er jo ingenting der. But they had this idea that they want to establish in the future there will be a state of the Jew, the Jewish state will be a, a new country, a new state. And they had the idea that in the future there will be a Jewish land, a new state. And we see this passage and they're saying that uh, the bones coming together. We see the whole passage that says the bones are coming together. Saying it saying that in verse five they're coming. To life, the bones coming to life together. The story of us comes on being a bit live on and become summon. And I lived for twelve years in the city Rishon Lezion in Israel. I built a tall wall in the city Rishon Lezion. And this city, this city was founded in 1882. But I built it in 1882. By 17 families who came from the Russian Empire. Of 17 families who come from the Russian Empire. And these families basically they bought the land. From the Arabs who lived there, but this family on a trip to a land for Oban and some built it up. And they said we have to do something here. But they said how do we do it? So they started to. They had they had a big problem there. They had a big swamps and malaria in this in this region. For the boy had still problem there. There were swamps and malaria in that region. And people were dying. And folk died. And they had to do something with the water because they didn't have enough water that morning. Og de måtte gjøre noe med vattene, for de hadde ikke clean water, vant eller rent vann. Så de fant det vatten, så de fant vatten. Og de begynte å så hvit der, hvit. Og de begynte å så hvite, men det var ikke suksessfullt. Men det lyktes ikke. Så de planter vinyards, så de planter vinlover. Og de kunne gjøre vann. Du kan tenke deg, før den fundasjonen av staten, i enden av 19. århundre, Tenk deg, før 1900-tallet. They were, they succeeded to sell this wine to Europe. Så kunne de lage vin, og så selge det til Europa. And make a living. Have some part of income. Og få inntekt. Kunne leve av det. And 
buy more land and establish a new Jewish settlement. Now why it's important? So when you go into Israel today, you will see the modern state, you will see lots of houses, you will see forests, you will see gardens. For når du går til Israel i dag, så ser du masse bygninger og du ser hager og skog og hverandre. But 120 years ago, the land was empty. Men for 120 år siden, så var landet tomt. People were living in poverty. Folk bodde i fattigdom. There were no forests. Ingen skog. No gardens. Ingen hager. And people were dying. Og folk døde. And as I said, these families, they came to settle there. Og som jeg sa, familiene, and after they come for so similar. And they were just, you know, they were good, uh, you know, they were dealing with the agriculture. And they earned some money. As I said, they bought more land. And they dig the land. They were planting trees. You know that Israel today is the leading nation in planting trees actually. Because I said, we want, we want to see this land beautiful. In you know in our in Israel you don't we don't have much rain today. Israel is a whole region which is like in Israel. But praise God we don't have a problem with water. Man, talk you the whole chair problem with water. Because what we do we actually purify we desalinate water from the sea and we use it for for all purposes actually today. For that we do we desalinate or we rinse water from the sea and so we use it for all the sorts of purposes. And we keep planting trees. More gardens. And the biggest miracle I would say, and for in my, you know, for me it's a miracle I would say definitely. Oh, just those the miracles. We succeeded to to sell our potatoes. Yeah, the biggest seller of our potatoes to the biggest country in the world, to Russia. To just those the land in Israel. Give me just a small Israel, tiny Israel. Thank you. Little Israel, selling potatoes to the biggest country in the world. Selling potatoes to the best land in the world. Not just there, but also carrots and peppers and other stuff from the land of Israel going to Europe and Russia. It's about the gold, copper, and all the things. So it's not Europe. It's connected directly with the species that we read just now. And it's connected directly to the ancient region. We see that Jews Jews were scattered among the nations for two thousand years. Vi ser at jødene var spredt blant nasjonene i 2000. Og plutselig så begynner de å komme tilbake til hjemlandet sitt. De hadde denne ideen at de var drivet av den Holy Spirit, og de hadde dem tilbake til landet. Og de var drevet av den hellige ånd som førte dem tilbake til landet sitt. Og hvem remember hva som skjedde i den kristne kristne kristne? Og kan man også huske på, som skjedde i den kristne menigheten? Det var en big Pentecostal charismatic revival coming to many countries in the end of 19th century. Det var en stor pinsevekkelse som kom til mange land mot slutten av... Jewish people started to come back on the first wave of Aliyah to Israel. Jødiske folk, de kom tilbake og først bølge av... Tilbake kommer til Israel. And the revival, the spiritual revival, started to happen in many countries in the world. Og så begynte den åndelige vekkelsen å skje i mange land i verden. And this was like a miracle. Og dette var et mirakel. Because Jews were coming back according to the prophecies to their homeland. Og jøde har kommet tilbake til hengelandet sitt. And people who were living in darkness coming to know the Lord. Og så folk som levde i mørke kom. Filled with the Holy Spirit, and they're being united with the Holy God, Holy One of Israel. Also, they are forgiven with Israel's Halia. Now you can imagine that it happened 67 years before the rebirth of the state of Israel. Or who started the chapter 67 or for young fathers now start in Israel? May 14, 1948. The 14th of May, 1948, was the establishment of the state of Israel. They started Israel at a bit. Day, day after, we know what happened. There are five, five armies attacked Israel. Dagen efter vet vi hva som skjedde. Fem herrer angrep Israel. In order to annihilate this tiny nation. For å tilintetgjøre den. Now we all know, we all know, we all know about the Holocaust. Vi vet alle om Holocaust. Six million Jews died in the Holocaust. Before the foundation of the state. 
6 miljoner euro. Det var som like the rebirth of pain. Döde för uh, staten var etablerad. Det var som födselsfär. Now it's hard to imagine, but your, for example, your population in Norway is 5.3 million people. Det är ju vanskligt att tänka sig, men tänk dockas befolkning i Norge 5,3 miljoner. And, and the, during the time of the Holocaust, 6 million Jews died. Och så när Holocaust skedde så döde 6 miljoner. I, in, Pol in the Poland, the majority in Poland, and uh, also a uh, lot more than a million Jews died in Ukraine. Uh, mass debate in Poland and also over a million in Ukraine. So you can imagine that so many people, they lost like, their life. Thank God, so many. And the whole families, whole families, whole families. And now, these Jews that came back from uh, different European republics. Oh no, these Jews who came back from different European countries. They came to the land of Israel before the foundation of the state. They came to Israel first thought by Abraham. They had to fight for their existence. So not to be, you know, slaughtered for their existence. They didn't have much weapons. They only had many weapons. But they were, they were just, they understood that if they are not going to fight, and if they are not going to slaughter, there will be no Israel. So clearly, we And then, Israel. till this day, we understand that we have to defend ourselves. Or, you don't go to store it, but you don't go to store And the, one of the things uh, that actually we do in Israel, uh, when we receive groups from many countries coming to our nation, we organize special meeting with the messianic soldiers serving in Israeli Defense Force. So when we serve, we meet with messianic soldiers who serve. And these soldiers have an opportunity to share what is what is like what is about to be in the Israeli army. Och dessa soldaterna de får då en möjlighet att dela och kolla hela och kunna nära och vara i här. Basically, sharing about the military law with the Christians coming from different countries. Uh, ja, det är det lag i det här med kristna som kommer från olika land. And why it's important? Och kuffor är det då viktigt? Det är det viktigt. It's it's ridiculous when we hear that Israel is attacking uh, Arabs. För det är helt lättare när vi hör att Israel we simply are uh, defending our existence in this land. We, I have like a for our existence. You know, there are so many enemies around us. There are so many fiends around us. And there is only one Jewish state. Also, there are only one Jewish state. Very small. Very little. Today, with the 8.5 million population, we have more than 8 million, and we have to defend ourselves. We have to defend ourselves. We are not attacking anyone. But if people attacking us, we have to defend ourselves. Now you have to understand a very important thing about the victory of Stone. In many, many, in different TV channels, people like in the media channels, they try to attack Israel for their for the actions. In many media channels, so people are angry for Israel. For their handling, and we we understand, we understand that we as believers we have to to say something against what's going on in this media today. We have a story about some Tuana, so we say no more than some share in media. So this is why we organize this meeting with the soldiers in Israel. But that was all when he said we will see more than the soldiers. Because we want that people will take it uh, to their countries what they have heard. For we will not folks go as a home of the Talak or your heart. Because our soldiers they actually say the truth about what's going on. For the war is over, they say focus on it. And the, the people will hear it and will take it to their countries, to their governments, to their municipalities, to their uh, churches. Or for the other after so tell you that the book it is not the same in the end or what you think about it. I haven't planned to speak about this actually now. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thorne. No, 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 I wanted to. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, it's it's a good thing to share with you about uh, you know what's going on now in the land also. And uh, jumping from uh, you know speaking about the history, we jumped a little bit here. I know. But they got to for the end of course on sharing on the news. So so that's what we're doing. Yeah, but anyway, we want that. Coming back to the May 14, 1948. In 14th May, 1948. As you know, that Israel uh, got victory over all these Arab armies attacking us. Israel. The same all these Arab armies. 
And at that moment, it was a big shock. But I will play that it's not shock. When it was the, the rebirth of the nation for many Christian denominations worldwide? For many Christian denominations worldwide. You know why? Because for for centuries they were teaching in the churches. And that God finished with Israel. And this is not uh, is God is dealing only with the church. And the church is a new Israel. Which I believe is wrong. God is still dealing with Israel. And God had a plan for this nation. And as a uh, as as a part of this nation, I can I can share it and testify that God is still God of miracles and He is still performing miracles in our land. You know, so as as many in many churches there was a teaching that God has rejected Israel. For the disobedience, for your now that they rejected the Messiah, the Messiah, which is partly is true. Some, but some, yes. But there is some. But you know that the first believers, first disciples, first apostles were from the Jewish nation. Man, do you know that the first two or the first apostles or the boy from a Jewish nation, and they brought this gospel to the end of the world, actually. Now we are glad that this gospel coming back to the land of Israel. Also with your help, with your prayers, and with, with your intercession. So as I said, for many churches, for many different Christian denominations, it was like a shock. Why? What happened? How is it possible that Israel have a state now? Och för många menigheter så var det ju ett chock. Hur kan det inte vara att Israel är liten stat? And you know what the, we were talking about the revival and the end and the beginning of 90s. Och vi snackade ju om väckelsen i början av 90-talet. What happened in the beginning of 90s? Vad skedde då? Huge revival started to happen in Russia, Ukraine and the former Soviet Union republics. Stor väckelse började att ske i Ryssland, Ukraina och andra we got saved during this revival. We like first, and many Jews like us got saved during this revival. Many Jews must be first in this revival. And there was a huge exile from this Russian Soviet Union republics to Israel. Was so bad and stole some outwandering from Soviet to Israel. So since 1990, there were more than one million Jews coming from the Russian, from the former Soviet Union to Israel. Och i 1990 så kom det då en miljon jöda från tidigare Sovjet till Israel. And remember again, it was a big revival. Och husk igen, det var en stor väckelse. In Russia, in a big exile of the Jews to Israel. Och det i Ryssland och så blev det då en stor revival. So we see this God's plan and all these things happening. Och vi ser ju Guds plan i allt det här som sker. And beforehand, there was a recapture, that Jerusalem was recaptured by Israel in 1967. You know, I believe all of you know about it. Also, for that, they so took you Israel back to Jerusalem in 1967. Do you remember that? Yeah, and you can imagine that uh, from 1967, Israel, uh, the Jerusalem became as uh, recaptured the western and eastern Jerusalem. Uh, in 1967, so uh, yeah, took the western and eastern Jerusalem, Israel. And today, as you can hear and see in the news. Jerusalem is all the time in the main headlines of all TV channels. Och i dag så ser vi att Jerusalem är hela tiden i överskriften på nyheterna. For many Christian denominations, actually, this fact is quite a problem, I would say. For many Christian menigheter så är det ett problem. Unfortunately, different Christian denominations are trying to boycott Israel. Det är så är det olika kristna menigheter som försöker att boykotta Israel. Det är så att 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 det är så
landet där vårt folk. And it's very sad to see what's going on. Och det är väldigt trist att se det. But at the same time, men samtidigt, we see good news. Så ser vi god nyheter. Well, I would say good Christians are supporting and they're praying for it for our land, for our people. Goda kristna som stöttar och ber för vårt land och vårt folk. Those who standing with us with the nation of Israel. De som står samman med oss Israel. And those who are coming to visit our land and say, just you know, embrace our people. Och de som kommer och besöker vårt land och så omfamnar vårt folk. And this is this is something amazing because it changed the opinion and the mentality of our people regarding Christians. Och det är helt fantastiskt för jag förändra mentaliteten och hur som folk ser på kristna i Israel. 20 år sedan när vi kom till Israel var det väldigt svårt att berätta det gospel i det land. För 20 år sedan när vi kom till Israel så var det vanskligt att dela evangeliet. Och så började det att hända. Och så började det något att ske. Vi vet att Gud har skapat en ny armé av de som intercerar för Israel. I många nationer, inklusive Norge. Vi vet att Gud reser upp en här och det som Går i förbund för Israel i många nationer, också Norge. Those who pray for the second part of this prophecy, for the spiritual restoration of the Jewish nation. De som ber för den andra delen av denna profetian, den andliga genomvattelsen av den judiska nationen. And this is the second part of the prophecy connected to what is written in Romans 11. Och denna andra del av profetian är knyttad till Romarna 11. It's where it is written that all Israel will be saved. Där det står att hela Israel ska bli frälst. We literally believe in this passage. Vi bokstavligt tar tro på det. Because we pray for our nation and we cry out before God for our nation that they will be saved. För vi är där för vår nation och vi ropar till Gud att vår nation ska bli frälst. And Sasson kan testify what God is doing now among the young people in our generation, in our people, among the young people. Och så som kan vittna om vad som Gud gör bland de unga i vår generation bland folk. And other even religious people who are actually actually giving their life to Yeshua to Jesus to nowadays. Och så religiösa folk som faktiskt ger sig till Yeshua på den andra tiden. So we see that not just the bones coming together. Vi ser att det är inte bara vägen som kommer samman. Covered by flesh. Och blir däckt av kött. But these bones coming to be to starting to be filled with the Holy Holy Spirit. And this is why the filter on her leon. People starting to come back to their God. For the people who come back to the same God. And the Messiah, or Messias, the Jesus, the Messiah, Yeshua, the Messiah, Yeshua. And this is wonderful to see because we've been praying for many years to 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 see this revival in our land. Och att han lär oss för vi har bett i många år om den här väckelsen i landet. I can tell that Beit Halel Art Congregation is very active in the evangelism. Jag kan säga att vår menighet Beit Halel är aktiv i evangelisering. We know that maybe some some of our congregations are very tired because that they don't see the good results. Vi vet att många av våra menigheter är väldigt trötta för vi har inte sett goda resultat. But we continue. Men vi fortsätter. We're not afraid from all the persecutions and all the difficulties that come in our lives. Vi är inte rädda för att förfölja oss och vanskeligheter som kommer. And we will continue to share the good news with our people. Och vi vill fortsätta att dela de goda nyheterna med folk. Because we are a part of this nation. Och vi är en del av den här nationen. We love this nation. Vi älskar den här nationen. And as Paul the Apostle was saying, I want to see these people getting saved. Och som Paulus apostlen skrev, vi vill se dessa folk att bli frälst. Because he loved his nation, his people. För han älskar sin nation. And we love our people. Och vi älskar vårt folk. And why, why, what are we speaking today about this subject? Och hvorfor snakker vi idag om detta? And you can, you may ask, why is it important for you today, this to hear it today? Och hvorfor är det viktigt för dig att höra det? Because we need, definitely we need your prayers, more prayers of Christians. För det är helt klart tränger vi dock oss. To intercede for our people. Vi tränger att dock gå i förbund för vårt folk. Because we know that when when our people, or there are more people who will be who will be saved. För vi vet att fler kommer att bli frälsta. There will be big revival coming from Israel again. Det kommer en stor väckelse till Israel igen. The number of believers is growing and more people coming to know the Lord. Antal troende vokser og flere og flere kommer og kjenner her. Jeg tror ikke vi vil se det i nyheten, men jøder og arabere i vårt land 
worshiping together today. Jag antar att inte så att det är nåt man gör och avbara till med samma i vårt land. And we say that the peace is possible, but peace is possible only, only through Yeshua, through Jesus. Vi säger fred är möjligt, men det går igenom Jesus. We have to understand that there is no political solution of our conflict we have today. Det är ingen politisk lösning på konflikten vi har idag. From in, you know it's impossible even if we will give them land that they want to receive this land. Sure, we skulle ge dem land och de vill ha det på landet. There will be no peace. Så blir det ingen fred. So we all of us believers as born again believers move with the Holy Spirit to understand there is no political solution for the conflict we have today. Så vi som är troende och fyllda av helgon vi förstår att det är inte någon politisk lösning. The only solution that uh, that Arabs and Jews will come to know the Lord. And slowly what's happening in our region we see good reports about Arabs coming to know the Lord, Muslims coming to know the Lord in the Middle East countries. And we receive it quite encouraging encouraging uh, testimonies that Muslims coming to know the Lord they've been filled with the Holy Spirit at the same time they've been filled with the love for our nation so we know there are Muslims there were Muslims, now they are saved and they're filled with the Holy Spirit and they have a love for Israel so we live in an amazing time we live in a fantastic time we see that God is moving we see that he is just bringing people to himself his family is getting bigger and he is saving more sons and daughters so before we will end to encourage you that God is faithful, He is a loving and kind Father, He is saving our people, and God is restoring Israel today. We see there is a new wave of Jews coming from Latin America nowadays. Vi ser en ny bølg av jøder som kommer fra Latinamerika. And there's a congregation we've been involved in sharing the gospel with them as well. Og som menighet så kommer vi til å være involvert i å dele evangeliet med deg. So you will see native Israelis. Så du kan jo se innfødte israelere. New immigrants from Russia and Ukraine. Nye immigranter fra Russland og Ukraina. Ethiopian Jews. Etiopisk jøder. And you will see Latin Jews from Latin countries. All people together, all in summer, worshiping the Lord together, that it will be a good summer, and bring the good news from Israel to other places. Also, for the good news now for Israel to other places. So, if you can stand up now, friends, and we can pray the blessing for Israel, I would like to pray for three main points now. So, if you can raise your hands, can we pray for Israel? First of all, we. Probably you've heard that we've purchased our purchased our building. First thing, we all chipped that building. It's a big miracle for us. But I just don't know why. Because you know, in Israel there are three hundred congregations. For Israel there are three hundred meninata. And only maybe ten or fifteen they have their own building. Or perhaps about ten or fifteen have their own building. And for us it's a big miracle to have our own building, not a rented place. Of course, there are two people who have. So I will ask you to pray that we will finally receive all our papers to enter this building and have a worship service there. I will not ask you to ask for your all the papers so we can fill the in the building and go to the there. And that we we will see more Israeli congregation receiving their old buildings or buying their building. What you will show fly the Israeli many at the. Because it's very difficult. There are also people that rent in their place, and it's quite an issue. There are many who buy, and that's a big issue. And second point, we are going to pray for the rabbis in Israel. For the other, we will pray for the rabbis in Israel. They will receive visions of Jesus in the synagogues. 
de Dio vicino a Gesù e si innamora. And because you know the, when the, the, uh, we believe there is a secret uh, uh, secret group of uh, religious Jews who believe in Jesus. Vi tror att det är en hemlig grupp av religiösa judar som tror på Jesus. And we pray for the courage. Vi ber om mot. True salvation. Genom fälsen. For them to speak publicly about their faith. Så att de kan säga det något om sin offentlighet. Believe me, there is enough five, ten rabbis that they will speak publicly about their faith. Tro mig, om det är fem, tio rabbiner som talar offentligt om sin tro. And it will make an earthquake in Israel. Spiritual earthquake. Och då blir det att ondlig jordkär i Israel. So it's the second point to pray for the rabbis that they will receive visions in the synagogues about who is the Messiah. Vi ber för rabbinerna att de ser visioner i sina bogarna om vem Messias är. And the third point, the third point, that we have to pray for the believers, att de ska be för troende, that they will have more influence in our society, att de kommer att få mer inflytelse i samfunnet. New businessmen, new engineers, new doctors, politicians, and other ingenjörer, läkare. Politiker och så vidare. That they can share the gospel with their fellow workers. Att de kan dela evangeliet med dem. That they will be filled with the courage from the Holy Spirit to speak publicly about their beliefs. Att de blir fyllt med mot och den här lilla ordet. Att de tar offentlig om sin tro. Three points. First point is pray for the congregations in Israel to have their own buildings. Första poäng. Punkt B för myndigheter i Israel att de ska ha egna bygg. Second is the salvation of the rabbis and the spiritual and supernatural encounters in the synagogues for them. And the third point is, as I said, is the belief that the believers will have courage and will receive education to work in different spheres of society. Och tre är att troende ska ha mot och kunna jobba på olika områder i samfunnet. Ok, så hur vill du pröva för dessa tre poängen? Så kan vi be för dessa tre tingena. Vem vill du? Kan vi ha det som? Det 
Tack Gud att du är mäktig till att hälsa. Som hela världen går emot så är du mäktig till att hälsa i Jesu namn. Amen. Thank you for all our visitors. <laughs> 